So data is coming from this router Zigbee, means the sensor data. Look at this data is coming from this LM35, goes into Arduino Uno, this chip. And then from this router Zigbee, it's coming to the coordinator Zigbee. And coordinator Zigbee will be over USB sending to Raspberry Pi. And then Raspberry Pi will be sending finally this data to your AWS IoT cloud. In this lesson, we will learn how to connect a router Zigbee with Arduino Uno. And the Arduino Uno along with router Zigbee will form an IoT node for us. Now to make the connections properly, we need to have uh, six male to female jumper wire, basically a four. So we will start the connections. So the first pin is we have to connect a 3.3 volt pin on the Zigbee module, means an adapter to 3.3 volt pin on Arduino Uno, okay? Then we have to connect the TX pin. So on the Zigbee module, we have the TX pin. The second pin is a TX. And I'm going to connect to pin number four on Arduino Uno. So I will count zero, one, two, three, and four, okay? Because we are using a software serial. Then we have to take another jumper wire and connect the RX pin. I don't know whether you can see, but the third pin from the right is the RX pin on the Zigbee module that will going to connect to pin number five on Arduino Uno. I don't know whether you can see, but I will show you a bit later, right? So it's the green color wire. And then in the end, we have to connect the ground pin so the leftmost pin ground on the Zigbee module. So I don't know, you can see the ground pin will connect to the ground pin on the Arduino Uno, right? So that's how you're gonna set up the connection. So red one is 3.3 volt. The yellow one is a TX on the Zigbee module will go to pin number four on Arduino Uno. And then RX, the green pin, green wire, from the Zigbee module, we're going to connect to pin number five on Arduino Uno. And then the last one, the rightmost is the ground pin. So when the connection is done properly, so this is how we're gonna connect Arduino with the router Zigbee. Now, because this is a sensor node, we can connect, we can take the uh, breadboard, okay? And then I have a little, I think I will put it this way. My breadboard is not very beautiful. It's it's a little bit crazy, broken, but it still served my purpose. So I can put down this LM35 temperature sensor. You can see it's very easy. And then I can take three male to male jumper wires. Okay, I have this three male to male jumper wires. And the left pin will going to connect to the five volt. So this will going to connect to the five volt on Arduino. Then the middle one is the analog output, so that's the temperature data. I will going to connect to A0 pin on Arduino Uno. Okay, and finally, the rightmost pin on the sensor module will going to connect to the ground. So this, I do have the ground, here is the ground. I hope you can see in the camera, but I'm just trying my best. The connection is not very simple. It's a bit ugly and crazy. And finally, we have to give the power, right? And uh, I can take the USB cable. Okay, let me just connect the power and uh, let me power up the Arduino board. You can see the live. And uh, I can just zoom out a little bit. Okay, zoom out a little bit and you can see. So here we have an Arduino side of a code and this code starts with a software serial library because we are using the software serial library to connect to the uh, Zigbee module with an Arduino and you see here we have created a software serial object my serial and the pin number four on Arduino connects to the TX pin on the Zigbee module and the pin number five on Arduino will connect to the RX pin on the Zigbee module. Then in a setup function you can see we have initialized the serial begin to use the UART or the serial communication on Arduino and then we have this my serial object myserial.begin to initialize the, 
the software serial that we are using on pin number four and five then in a loop function we create a my value variable and we read the data from analog pin a0 and then we multiply this my value variable so this my value variable we multiply with 0 0.4882 to convert the temperature in degrees celsius and this my value will hold the uh, temperature sensor value and then we just simply print on a serial monitor and then as you can see there is you know a couple of lines of code where we calculate the checksum if you want to know more about this calculations on a checksum and all if you want to learn more deep detail on how to use a zigbee to build a wireless sensor network then you can check out the link in a video descriptions and talk to me connect to me and uh, I have a contact us page given where you can easily write me a mail or ring me the bell on a phone and we're going to find out the training program that suits to you. And I would be very happy to help you. Then we create a, a variable uh, array data. It's a byte array data and uh, it's a standard Zigbee frame. Basically, this is not something that you have to invent. Uh, it's just a, a standard a Zigbee protocol in which we uh, we pack together the sensor value that we want to send and as you can see this um, um, this frame zigbee frame is unique that we want to transmit to the other end so this is a router zigbee connected to arduino and the router zigbee connected to arduino is sending this temperature sensor data this my value variable data a temperature data to the coordinator zigbee which is on the other side is connected to raspberry pi and this um, frame so this frame is unique because it has the mac address of the coordinator zigbee and this is um, the coordinator zigbee's mac address and the zigbee is basically connected to raspberry pi and you can see here is my value variable which is basically a temperature sensor data that we want to send and in the end we have the checksum which basically defines the end of the um, the frame that we want to transmit Zigbee frame from Arduino to Raspberry Pi and then you can see this data array that we want to pass in by just saying my serial dot write and we're just passing this data array which is the size of 19 bytes because this frame is altogether uh, the 19 bytes um, till the checksum and then we are sending after the delay of 3.5 milliseconds so you can just play around this if you want right so you can come down and I think we just have to finish the curly bracket here and as you can see it's just a simple piece of code and let me just upload the code and see what happens so once the code is uploaded you can see lower left corner done uploading I can open the serial monitor and see what's going to the other end of the um, uh, coordinator zigbee right which is connected to raspberry pi so let's go and do the connections on the raspberry pi and the coordinator zigbee module and then we will write a python program which will read the data coming from the arduino over wireless zigbee protocol and then send it to the aws iot core okay this is your raspberry pi which is your iot gateway and then you connect instead of the laptop you will connect this coordinator zigbee to your raspberry pi so let me just make it like this by the way i cannot power it up my raspberry pi but in the real scenario i mean how can i make this right it just cannot fit into the screen it's nonsense i hope you can see like this right so let me just try and zoom out. This is zoom in. I don't know how can I zoom out. Okay, so what I'm trying to tell you is this is an IoT node which is dedicated power over the mains. You can see here the adapter and it is powered and it is standalone. And here is the coordinator Zigbee that is connected to Raspberry Pi. And the connection is really simple. This is a normal USB. This is a normal USB, okay? You can connect straight into the USB port of your Raspberry Pi, right? Now, I don't have the Type-C power cable so that I can power up the Raspberry Pi, but I think you, you are good enough to understand like how you're gonna power it up, right? I think I can try and find if I can find something here. 
Okay, so fair enough. I don't have the type C, but I do have other Raspberry Pi. So what I'm going to do, I just throw this Raspberry Pi 4 out there and I will use, for the example, I will use a Raspberry Pi 3 uh, B plus module and I'm going to connect this according to the Zigbee to my Raspberry Pi like this. Simple, easy enough, um, the connections and then I would just power up my Raspberry Pi like this. It doesn't matter by the way you have Raspberry Pi 3 or Raspberry Pi 4 but uh, it's just alright. I don't have the type C so I'm just managing and finally you just power up your Raspberry Pi and probably once it boots up you can see you see the orange LED lights up. So data is coming from this router Zigbee means the sensor data. Look at this data is coming from this LM35 goes into Arduino Uno this chip and then from this router Zigbee it's coming to the coordinator Zigbee and coordinator Zigbee will be over USB sending to Raspberry Pi and then Raspberry Pi will be sending finally this data to your AWS IoT cloud. Okay so that's how you're gonna make the use case. I will show you through my camera. Really I'm not prepared for this video but I'm just trying my best to give you as good demonstration as possible. So I hope now we're gonna go to the screen and write a code uh, for Raspberry Pi and push this temperature sensor data to AWS IoT platform. AWS IoT core by the way. Let's speak about AWS publish.py script which basically makes the communication works right. So let me just open the code sudo nano aws publish.py and let me zoom in the code and you can see we have the sys module and then we have the time module and then we have the paho mqtt client i'm not going to go deep into the code because the code is really a bit complex and if you need any help you can always check out the link in the description and you can connect to me you can contact me over email or you can give me the call and that's absolutely fine and i will help you because I don't want to make this video very long and discuss everything. So just uh, this module is in Paho MQTT client library because we are using MQTT library to let the Raspberry Pi to talk to AWS cloud. And then we are using this module SSL because the communication is a secure and then JSON thread and then GPIO. And then because the Zigbee is connected to Raspberry Pi over USB cable and that's basically using the UART which is a serial communication protocol and then we have the structure to use in a Python code to um, extract the bits uh, and bytes from the frame and that's where we are using struct and then we have the Zigbee because we are using a Zigbee protocol at the Raspberry Pi site to read the data from the coordinator Zigbee to Raspberry Pi and later Raspberry Pi can push that data to the AWS. And then we have the port which is basically the USB port and because we have connected um, Zigbee module coordinator Zigbee to Raspberry Pi over USB uh, port, USB cable and then we have the baud rate because every serial communication uses a baud rate and it's a standard 9600 and then there are a few lines of code this basically doesn't make any sense for uh, the demo that I'm showing it's for the other purpose but you can see there's a serial object that is created out of the serial module this is a serial module from the serial python library and then we are using the serial we are passing the serial um, uh, variable instance into the Zigbee which is another uh, you know the instance variable instance that is created it's a Zigbee this ZB stands for the Zigbee connected on the serial uh, USB port to our Raspberry Pi and then in this method on connect method on a Python we just wants to see if it if our Raspberry Pi can connect to AWS IoT platform and that's why when we ran the code we used to see connected with result code 0 because 0 which is what written from the AWS IoT core to Raspberry Pi that basically ensures the communication is working fine um, for uh, the Raspberry Pi and the AWS IoT platform now let's go down a little bit and here we have the uh, quite a few um, you know methods that we are using this this client mqtt client uh, basically we want to give an information about the root ca file and then we have the certificate file security certificates and then the private key and then we have the server aws iot core where we want to send the data and then in the never ending while loop look at this uh, so never ending this uh, intrusion detected 
is the function in which we are using this never ending while loop in which we are reading the frame so we create a variable instance frame is equals to zb wait read frame so we are reading the frame which is coming from the router zigbee which is connected to arduino and the temperature data that is uh, the temperature that we are reading from the Arduino that we are reading towards the coordinator Zigbee and the Raspberry Pi so we have to read the frame sent by the uh, router Zigbee and Arduino from the other end and that basically will be stored into this frame variable and then we can just extract this frame variable RF data because this is a RF communication protocol and then we just have to extract this unpack the data from the frame as the data is basically a my value variable okay so this is the the my value variable uh, which is what we are sending from the Arduino and uh, we just want to extract this my value variable and then store into this um, you know the data variable that's we define here variable instance data and then you see we print um, this data variable once that's why when we run the script you can see in the terminal the temperature is printing and then client.publish we're basically printing this data variable on home slash temp topic and that's why you know when I save the code and then when I run python aws publish dot pi when I run the code that's why it prints the, the the temperature on the terminal and at the same time if I go to my aws account and let me just clear for you once because I already subscribed so you can see the data started streaming and going to the cloud as well as coming to my front-end client applications which is basically um, um, my front-end client and you can see the data how nicely it is streaming from AWS to my Windows machine and Windows application MQTT FX now as I said you know if you need any kind of help if you want to implement the project and if you really drive and wants to learn really core concept of IoT and embedded systems then you can then you can check out the link in the description and feel free to write me in mail or message or ring me the bell on a phone and that's absolutely fine thank you very much I hope you will find this video educational and entertaining see you bye bye